Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Actually, it's morning for me. It's actually very early. Um, but I'm waiting for a page to get cleared, so I thought, you know what? It's time to fire off a YouTube video right now. I have to stay on it. You know, the thing is, is this is extracurricular for me. And um, so, you know... I'm on a really, really tight deadline right now, helping out on a, a very late book, and make sure get, I'm just warming up my uh, hand and seeing where the brush and the ink is at right now in a little black area, and it's working good. Um, I wanted to come back to the furry, creepy, dog, demon, fluff or nutter dude. <laughs> um, and hey, by the way, 300 videos, you've got to watch that 300th um, uh, video um, celebration storyteller thing that I did. Um, it's funny because I had a friend shoot me a note and he was saying um, about another video that I had posted for the Patreon people. Um, it's a private video for people that are supporting me on Patreon. But um, he was he said, oh man, I was like the director's cut of that story. There was like so much more info. And the funny thing is, is that was like 20% of what really went on. But yeah, when I tell those stories, believe it or not, I actually have to kind of abbreviate things because... Um, there's just a lot to tell, and sometimes I've been on YouTube long enough to kind of know how to like sort of like streamline stories, and you just sort of like uh, you have to kind of categorize what's actually kind of important to tell or not. But anyway, so I'm using older ink right now um, because the blue on the paper will sometimes not take ink, and I'm going to give you a quick example just so you can see something. So this is the normal ink that I'm inking with right now today. We'll put some right here, but if if you look, do you see how like you can see blue through that one chunk? That's not where like Again, I'm not going to ink this part, so it doesn't really matter. But, but um, do you see how it's kind of like the blue is starting to do weird things on top of it? And you can lay down coats of black to sort of like fill that in and get it black. And honestly, scanning it, it really won't make a difference. But when you print blue lines, I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques for it. And I'm even going to be experimenting with some new ways to print um, them over the next couple of months. I've got like a four-month gig um, I'm going to be doing um, over blue lines. And... Um, I may actually start printing them out in pencil color. It depends, because I'm going to be using some techniques. Again, I'm just warming up my hand right now. I haven't inked it all yet this morning, and I'm trying to just test the tools on something that's not going to really matter. Um, but, um, yeah, so I'm going to be experimenting a tiny bit with them. I mean, honestly, I'm on the phasing out of a lot of things in my career right now, um, as, as you'll kind of see as the channel evolves. But, um We'll get to that later, but, um, you know, we're moving forward. This isn't like a static spot. This isn't, um, you know, like a nostalgic, um, you know, going through like, um, how would I explain it? Um, well, like, as a, for instance, the real-time inking thing that I'm doing over David, I'm going to do one more install, installment of it, and I'm going to wrap it up. Because I thought about it this morning. There's really no reason for me to be doing David Finch inking demos other than the fact that I know that there are fans of Finch out there. But anything that I want to show, I could just draw it myself, and it just seems sort of pointless to be, like, trotting out um, stuff like that to work on. And it's, it's just... Um, I know that the curiosity is there, but I could draw a piece and use similar techniques to that and, and actually be working on my own stuff at the same time. You know what I mean? It's like a double win. Um, you get the examples, and um, I'm also progressing my work and not just sort of like spinning my wheels doing stuff that I already know that I can do. Um, so, you know, the thing is, is as much as I'm telling you all that you need to challenge yourselves, I, I need to be mindful of challenging myself. So, you know, again, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. And sometimes to move forward, you have to go a little backwards. You make some sacrifices to get to get better. You know, go out of your comfort zone. And all of a sudden, you know, you're like, uh-oh, like I don't have this, like, security blanket. But at the same time, that's how you improve. No risk, no reward. Um, but, yeah, so I'm using brush, and I'm going in, and I'm inking, like, a lot of his sort of... Um, I don't know what you call it, chin or like the side of the face hair. Um, it's a little wet right here. I threw a lot of ink down. I'm trying to like avoid that spot right now and figure out where I can ink. Um, but uh, yeah, it was kind of cool. Like I said, I was just thinking this morning, I'm like, what am I inking like Finch stuff for? Like, like, uh, I mean, 
I, again, I know that there's a lot of fans of David's stuff, and it was it was it was easy for me to grab it out because I knew that he had a lot of like rendering techniques on it. But then I'm like going like, what is the point? Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna finish the Hulk piece for you all though, so you will see that I'll do the rain. I had again, I'm working on a black drawing right now. Um, and for people that don't know my work, I'll put a link in the description below, and you can run through like like one little section of stuff that I do. That it was a series of illustrations I did called the black drawings, and um, you know you can take them for what they're worth but um i needed to get that done first so um the the hulk rain piece will be right after that and um i've got WonderCon coming up and i'm getting crushed by this deadline so there's like a few things going on right now but yeah 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 so i mean i'm just i'm really excited to actually just draw some pieces for you guys and and we can get into some really really crazy rendering and and detail and hot looking female characters and cool monsters i mean i, I can kind of do all that stuff i just sometimes i forget and you know it's an interesting thing this is another thing when i was sort of i took a walk before i was actually going to sit down to do this video and i was just you know trying to get some exercise in before i sat down to work and um what happens when you work a lot is your brain gets kind of dull it's a very weird thing but i've definitely found that because of the pace that I work, how many days that I work, I feel well rested because I sleep and I eat well and stuff like that. But at the same time, there's a great quote in this Rush documentary where they talk about that they were they had been on the road for a couple of years and Getty Lee goes, and we were just getting stupid. And and that's kind of what working a lot will do to you. It just it makes your decision making sometimes poor. Sounds weird, but but when you're overworked, you know, you're, you're, at some point your body kind of goes into like protection mode where it's, it's just trying to survive basically. And, and, um, it sounds dramatic, but unless you've really done professional art for any extended amount of time, you don't know what it's like. A lot of people lose it. All right. When they disappear and don't do work, it's a lot of times it's the pressure and the demand of the job telling you when when people bail out of books and projects just like out of the blue they couldn't hack it that's the bottom line of course sometimes life pops up and there's little things that happen in, in someone's life where um you know you 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 really have to address something else in your life you know parent gets sick or whatever it is but uh you know I, i've i've been around enough artists and i've seen enough artists and trust me there's a breaking point for everyone <laughs> So, um, you know, it just depends on how forthcoming they want to be about, like, what went on. But, yeah, that's why I say, like, watch that Zen of Artist um, series that I'm doing. I'm telling you, like, a, a lot of my channel, well, not a lot, but a, a, a section of my channel, the vlog, Journey of a Thousand Miles, is really about being able to maintain a sense of sanity within working professionally because it can kick your ass. And if you're not being monetarily rewarded for it greatly it can really start to um beat you up because it's like you don't have the wiggle room you're dependent on the job there's a lot of um chaos that surrounds a lot of the gigs um you know you're working with a small team of people and if everybody's not on the same page and if not everyone is responsible especially if they're in front of you meaning the person that's going to be delivering you the next chunk of work um it can get real weird i'm super reliable i'm on it um you know and so it's challenging when i work with someone who doesn't have that same commitment to the job and it can be very very different it could be that they don't communicate the way that you do um they don't manage time the way that you do whatever it is and i'm not even talking about like right this second just in general this is just generally speaking of of what can happen on a job like like some people are more comfortable waiting till the last second to finish their part of um, a book and then all of a sudden you're getting 12 pages at one time but you sat around for days and days really with nothing to do or, or minimal amount of work and then you have to figure out how to now adjust to this um, more extreme situation for me I, I like to um, stay on top of things you know it just makes it easier if if every day i'm working stuff will get done there's just no two ways about it um 
And so I prefer that over waiting till the last minute to do something. And if anything, I prefer to kind of get done a little early. I mean, there's nothing better than, um, you know, something's due on the 28th and you're wrapping it up like the 23rd. And it's possible as long as you start it early enough and you manage your time throughout the job. Working on this black drawing right now, what I'm doing is I work an hour in the morning and about an hour at night. And again, using that um, Zen of Artist technique of manipulating time, I've extended both of those um, time frames of, of how long I'm actually working. So I tell myself an hour, but I usually will go over that by a about another 30 minutes so I'm really doing three hours a day I just don't tell myself that going into it and um, it's worked really well last night I mean I, I actually was kind of bummed when I had to stop but I forced myself to stop so I would be excited to work on it the next morning and I know when I need to have it done and I almost could bet money that I'm gonna finish it early I'm faster than I give myself credit for too uh, on top of it I, I generally will try to um, uh, you know, like if, if I was to ask myself, like, how long does something take? I usually will overshoot it, um, which is better because then you're not undershooting it and, and not having enough time to do it. So, again, I hope that, that when you watch these videos of me inking, that you're not only seeing how a professional artist approaches something, but you're also getting some really, really good information from someone who's a pro and who's been... Um, I've done it, you know, I've walked the walk, I've done hundreds of books, um, I've done thousands of pages, I, I trust me, I know what I'm talking about, I really do, um, so, you know, this isn't just someone blowing, like, smoke out his ass, and, and I've been able to, 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 to maintain it, which, which, uh, granted, I haven't always been able to work on the best books, just, it's more a twist of fate, um, in that there's only so many great pencilers and, and a lot of times they get locked down with a certain team and you know you're just you're not gonna have the opportunity to work with them but I almost always do monthly work on top of the fact of, of all the other stuff so so it really starts to add up you know it really does it's, it's pretty crazy so right now I'm using what what it's this is ultra draw ink that's old I what I do is is when my ink starts to get too thick, I have these old Pelican bottles, and so I use the little sucker top. Let me show you this real quick. And I suck the ink up into the um, this thing, and then I squirt it in here. And I call this, uh, well, actually, my, my friend Chip nicknamed this Mississippi Mud. It's the real dark black ink, but what's nice about it is it goes down real well over the blue, and you get a nice jet black ink. So older ink will look more black, generally. It doesn't always flow off a crow quill well, but it will definitely give you um, a nice dark application um, on your page, which is really what you want. What time, what time are we? We're 13 minutes. Cool, you know what? I'll do 20 minutes on this because, like I said, I don't like, like because I'm working today, I may actually, I'll probably pencil for a little bit this morning, is what I'll do while I'm waiting for this page to get turned in and then approved. But, um, um, yeah, like like this will be the last time that I probably come back to this little dog guy again. I'm I'm kind of wrapping up all these sort of like demos over other other people's stuff. I, I would rather do a penciling demo and then an inking demo. If you know you get what I'm saying is like draw my own monster creature, show you how I ink it, and and uh, get going with that. There's just no point to be doing other people's work. Shoot, I shut the bottle link. <laughs> Give me one sec. I gotta open this. Um. So what else? What else? What else? Um. Patreon. Go check out my Patreon page. I'm telling you, not only do I upload free stuff, but, I mean, even if you tip $1 one time, you're going to get access to free stuff that I'm starting to put there that, that is going to be exclusive to the, the, the patrons. Um, you know, and it, it it's it's only because at some point I do need to reward those people that are going over there and actually, like... Um, supporting me you know what i mean it was it, it is a tip jar it's not necessary and you'll always get killer killer content for free on youtube so it's not a must but if you ever think about it and you're like you know what i could totally kick this guy a dollar um you'll all i'll immediately send you links to the, the the hidden stuff that i've been posting for them there's not a lot yet but, the, but my goal is to kind of frequently um just add up you know private videos for them um you know just in, another extension of, of all this. Um, so it's just something fun. But trust me, there's so much on my YouTube channel. And I really highly suggest 
go go into my channel and when you click on videos you can sort the videos look at oldest first and move forward because people will ask me they'll go like have you ever posted like videos of like your art or like you need to show like this and it, it's there's really good videos that are up already that have that stuff i am going to go back and re-narrate a few of them i'm going to slowly kind of work my way through my channel and kind of survey the work that i've done um you, you know so i can see what's what what i've said what i've done what what what's what's the content that I've provided and then um, I'm going to um, cherry pick stuff from that and expand on it you know what I mean like I can kind of like I can riff off of things that I've touched on that maybe I didn't ever go back to um, you know there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity to um, go further and then the really good videos that that have kind of what I would consider sort of lackluster narration when I was I was trying to be informative and it just it just came off a little too um, distant I you know I was I was trying to be matter of fact I guess you know like like and definitely more animated is funner <laughs> and it's really more my personality anyway you know I just didn't want to overwhelm people but then you kind of see like like, oh, you know what's some big deal? I'm switching to a crow quill to do these lines. Hopefully this crow quill is decent and the ink flows. We'll see. The ink that I'm using on the crow quill right now is the um, Eon Black Vortex ink. And uh, I just brought that into my um, repertoire, so to speak. I hadn't used it in months. Um, maybe even a year, but, um, because we're doing the YouTube channel and there's conversations going on about supplies and different things, I thought, what a great opportunity to experiment. One of the upcoming things that I'm actually going to do too is I'm going to, I'm going to go through all my Copics today and check them. And then I'm going to see how Copic works over blue line. Because I've got a couple of ideas for um, working over Ryan Benjamin over the next few months. And I'd seen his con sketches. And he was doing some real nice stuff with Copics. And I wanted to um, I wanted to bring a little bit of that flavor into um, our work together. And so the thing is, is so that I can get my originals back, I prefer to work on the blue lines right now. Um, and, uh, but I want to see if Copic will go over blue line. And if it won't go over blue line, maybe if I print this out as more of a graphite look, uh, meaning instead of printing blue, printing like a very light gray, um, it will work better. We'll see. And then I have to check how well I can clean it up in Photoshop and remove the gray. I've done it before in the past, but whenever I'm bringing something new back into the mix, it's always a good idea to, um, double check you know what what like how does the process work and you can do it with a very very small thing you know ink for 20 minutes or f 15 minutes you know or something and then you know go through the whole process of what you're considering introducing and then you know do a dry run before you spend you know six to eight hours on a page and then you realize oh man that didn't really work good that's no good right well I hope this is fun to check out Moving right along on this little fuzzy guy. Again, a lot of these techniques are things that I've already showed y'alls. Um, and uh, he's really, really fun to ink. Man, I love this little guy. I don't know what your name is, little buddy, but I like you. I do. Um, let's see. What else can I do? I'll, I'll do... I'll do one finger. I'll do this finger, and then we'll call it. I talked about this the uh, the other day, but when I first used the Eon um, black ink, it was interesting, the Vortex ink. Um, the ink seized up about, you know, I, I did a demo of it, and I was like, wow, this stuff actually worked really good. I'm, I was super pleased with it, and, and um, man, about an hour later, it got thick, just like out of the blue. It was so weird, and uh, 
I fought with it for an hour or two trying to see if like, you know, like if I dip my nib in water before I grab the ink, it would work. And um, I ended up just diluting it with water where I just put in enough water where it started to flow off my nib good. So you just, you don't want to overshoot it. Just put a little bit at a time until you start getting the lines, you know, coming off the, um, the pen, you know, where you like, like the flow. Um, but, uh, Again, my bottle of ink is older, so it, it just could be that the ink is, you know, chemically degrading. So it's it was it's absolutely not a knock against the product, but um, it's it's it was a good um, opportunity for me to be confident with trying a few things and and troubleshooting the the problem, which a lot of times with ink, paper, and tools you do need to consider, you know, like you need to be able to assess things pretty quickly and then figure out what you're going to do. Because if you're on a deadline, you can't be stalling for a couple of hours, you know, going, uh Oh, like, I don't know what's going on, but I don't know how, how am I going to, how am I going to fix this? What am I going to do? Got to let this dry for a second and then I'll come in. I'm going to do a brush and I'll, I'll go and move through this and kind of fade it up. Um, what else? Yeah. So, the channel is doing so well. We cracked 4,500 subscribers, which is really amazing. I mean, you don't even understand how hard you have to work sometimes to get new subscribers. I know that, that it's not like that for everyone, but, man, I feel like I fight for every square inch of, of like, um, progress that I make on YouTube. I mean, it's it's very, very slow. Um, which is fine. I don't, I don't really mind that, but, um, yeah, it is, it is interesting. And then it, it, it's funny too, because you occasionally will just like lose a subscriber and you're like going like, do they, do they not like the inking video? Like what, what happened? Like why, why they bail now? I'm like doing, like, this is, this is the best the channel's ever been. Like, but you know, I know people, uh, you know, Gmail accounts close. It could have been. You, know, you never know what the circumstances are on that end, but uh, yeah, it is funny. <laughs> this is the good stuff. Don't leave yet. <laughs> and then you kind of wonder too, like, did they like the old? Like, did did they like it better when I wasn't showing art techniques? Said so I try to keep the channel varied uh, for a few reasons. One, one, it's it's enjoyable to me, and and. I'm a very curious mind, you know, my, f one of my favorite things in life is to learn. I absolutely love to learn. I love the idea of constantly growing. And, you know, I, I had used some examples of artists that did great work, like throughout their life, uh, and some are living and some, some are not with us anymore, but, you know, Frazetta, you've got JC Leindecker, Norman Rockwell, Atomo, Mobius, um, and one that I forgot, who I'm actually a very, very big fan of, um, is Al Hirschfeld, the car caricature pen and ink guy. Uh, he drew his whole life, like, up until his, like, 90s. And, you know, granted, I mean, there's definitely a point where your skills start to um, be challenged by, I, I, you know, just your health probably in general. But, but um, you know, I, I think it's, like, like, I do art to express myself. I do it as a professional to provide a living for myself, of course. But, um, you know, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't still be doing art 50 years from now, you know, honestly. Um, and I, I, my goal is to be as healthy as possible, as long as possible, and to continue to do really, really interesting art like Mobius did really up until you're gone, you know? So to me, it's always been the long game. I used to, I used to refer to that more on the channel. Um, and again, I, I just can't s s recommend more. Go back and watch uh, even the vlogs. I'm telling you, if you like this kind of stuff, there, there's so many little observations and little aha moments that we had along the way that really will kind of enrich, enrich your, um, I just think your your perspective of things. And it's not mumbo jumbo. I don't I don't get into that stuff. I'm I'm pretty realistic about things. So, you know, it's not like, oh, believe everything's great. It's gonna be great. 
it's not like that. You have to work for it. But at the same time, there's patterns and behaviors that you can have that will help you through it. Okay, I'm done. Blah, blah, blah. I'm in a real good mood this morning. I'm very, very inspired. The channel got me excited. It was weird. I wasn't really celebrating yesterday, but I kept kind of going like, you know, you have a reason to be proud of yourself because you came to YouTube and you stuck it out and you worked really hard here and you've built something. And I really appreciate all the people that support it. So, okay, this one's going to be a wrap. We're going to say goodbye to this and... um We'll work on that David Finch Wonder Woman thing one more day, and then I'll finish the Hulk piece, and then pretty much moving forward, I'll only be working on my own stuff. If I find moments, like if I, like say if I'm asked Inca Jim Lee page, obviously I'll, I'll, I'll do a video on that, but um, we're moving forward, okay? Everything is moving forward here. You're moving forward with your art, I'm moving forward with the channel and my art. We're all going to high-five in 2019 when we're slaying it. All right? Smash the like. Check out my Patreon. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, share my videos. If you go somewhere and people are chatting about cool art art places where they check out art and learn about art, tell them about this, this YouTube channel. All right? Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.